The Unabomber died in a prison medical facility. He was 81 years old. Kaczynski was serving a life sentence for a series of attacks between 78 and 95. He mailed or hand delivered homemade pipe bombs. Three people were killed, 23 others hurt in the 16 separate blasts. In 1995, Kaczynski sent a 35,000 word manifesto to several publications. The, the Unabomber realizes that, that man naturally lives in little communities. He lives in a family, then the family lives on a block, and the block is part of a village or is part of a street. And, and the Unabomber realizes that men need that. But he says, any such small-scale loyalty is necessarily disrupted by the large-scale commitment required for industrial technology to function. It's very smart. They are wanting a whole lot of things which undermine what on the other side they also think they want. And so the whole system of American life, for instance, tends to the destruction of the family. So there is always a trade-off. And the trade-off of industrial technology is expensive. Exactly the same things happen in, happening in Europe. In Europe, decent Englishmen are saying, we want England. Decent Germans, patriotic Germans are saying, we want the sovereignty of Germany. Uh, decent Frenchmen are saying, we want old-fashioned Catholic France. But a quarter of an hour later, that same Englishman, the same German, and the same Frenchman are all saying, but we also want the nice life which is provided by European-scale production. But the moment you speak up for European-scale production, so that the the, the shoes come from Spain, the tomatoes come from Italy, the uh, razors come from Holland, the beef comes from England, whatever it is. The moment you want wide-scale production, with all the bananas coming from Ireland, whatever it may be, you've necessarily got to put Europe first. You have to step into the system and make part of the system and obey the system for the system to operate. Whereas when you're running your own little farm with your own little horses, independent of anybody else's farm, you don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing on their farm. Your, the unit, the working unit, is just your little farm. The working unit, at the very most, your little village. But industrial technology means that your working unit is either the whole country or the whole continent. And in Europe, the, it's getting dramatic because the, the national sovereignties of these famous old nations is going under, and it's going under the wheels of the juggernaut of industrial technology. The, originally, the use of a motor car was optional, but the motor car, the very motor car, so changed the layout of cities that now you have to have a motor car. Therefore, he argues, industrial technology will be stopped by no small-scale reform, but only wholesale revolution. So he's wanting another revolution to break up the industrial technology establishment. The clash between industrial technology and human freedom is highlighted by industrial technology's present pursuit of ways to tame wild behavior. For instance, the control of schooling, the control of parenting, Drugs. Uh, what's the famous one that they're giving to kids? It begins with an R. Retin. Uh, psychotherapy. Neurology. <coughs> genetics. Eventually, it's just around the corner, brain engineering. These are all forms of manipulation by which industrial technology will, if it can, re-engineer, re-engineer the very nature of man in order to fit industrial technology. He's right. In other words, the tail is wagging the dog. Man has created industrial technology to serve him, but now man is going to be changed in order to serve and to fit industrial technology. That's what's happening. It's happening right around us. And you know, you see the constant, you know, we, the, the, we give the kids drugs because they're not fitting into our wonderful schools or they're not fitting into our wonderful way of life. Or my, my wife is considering that I'm a son of a... <clears throat> well, I need to send her to the psychotherapist because she's got the problem. <coughs> no, maybe she hasn't. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe all of these kids that misfit modern society, maybe they're not misfits. Maybe it's the society that's the misfit. You listen to these rock singers. 
I mentioned in this thing that I mentioned Pink Floyd. You listen to these rock singers, they're in pain. And they're in pain at modern society. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. They're complaining at the schools because the school system is processing and brainwashing. The school system is denying these kids their value and importance as human beings. It's wanting to turn them into machines. It's wanting to turn them into computer nerds. And a marvelous sentence of his is that he says, the teachers in today's schools are too busy taking knives and guns away from the kids to have the time to turn them into computer nerds. It's well said. Very well said. Because the kids don't want to be turned into computer nerds. What do the kids want? They don't know. They don't know what they want. All they know is that they don't want modern society. I'm not saying the kids are saints or angels. But I'm saying that, that, if, that modern society has got a lot of things deeply wrong. And the Unabomber, even without the faith, is intelligent enough to be on the tail of these things that modern society's got wrong. What's happening is, we come, this is where we're connecting with the encyclicals. The, the Catholic Church understands human nature as God made it. But the Masons are wanting to change human nature. They're wanting to bend, they're wanting to substitute God's nature with a new nature of their own. But the new nature, the new world, the new technological world, the new machine world that they're producing to change human nature doesn't fit human nature. And so the poor kids are squealing and yelling because they know it doesn't fit. Then the kids reach the age of 20 and they flip. The kids flip. The kids say, well, I'm being offered a nice cushy job with 50,000 a year, and there's a sweet chick here, so I'll go, I'll settle for a ticky-tacky house, a ticky-tacky wife, a ticky-tacky car, a ticky-tacky salary, and I will have a ticky-tacky happiness, and then my kids, I know, will listen to rock and roll when they grow up, but I know that they'll grow out of it just like I grew out of it. What kind of a world is that? It's a triumph of the devil, an absolute triumph of the devil. Everybody is being dehumanized. Everybody's getting crushed. If, if IT wins, then not even the, the drivers of the IT will have much freedom to move. Whereas, if IT is smashed, that's the Unabomber's dream, there may be chaos, but at least humanity will have another chance. And the chaos may cause less suffering than the continuance of our industrial technology will cause. Poof.